Hello there. We're so glad that you've joined us. Here we are again for another episode of Faith X Life, where we dissect how our faith intersects with our lives. We're so glad that you've joined us. <laughs> this past Sunday, we had Pastor's Appreciation, and mm -hmm. we had the honor of not only celebrating and honoring our pastors, Pastors George and Angel Reed, but also to have the Northwest Ministry Network Superintendent, Dr. Don Ross, and his wife, Brenda Come Ross, on. here with us this past Sunday. And it was it was phenomenal to have them uh, here. He gave a an incredible word, and that's what we're going to be talking about uh, today and dissecting. Let's go. Uh, so one of the first things that he um, said, which was kind of like an eye-opener, especially for uh, us here at this house, because our pastors are so like so down to earth so relatable so relational and sometimes we can forget like being a pastor is like a god position like a god ordained right. position you know and uh so one of the things he said is what we say about our pastors uh, because they're a gift to us it's their gift to this ministry Come on. um is a reflection of what we think about jesus <laughs> because of who he is and i was like oh shucks you know <laughs> and we always like try to align our thoughts and our words with um for like each other but especially for like the position in the office of being a pastor right like align that with like honor and gratitude but just that reflection of like them as, yeah. a, as a gift and how we see them and how we think of them is how we think about jesus right and i i think it just it correlates so well because as as pastors or as they pastor mm -hmm. with the heart that they pastor with it you know for this body it they they it's so much of the heart of jesus yeah and they they strive to reflect that in mm -hmm. everything they do so the fact that he brought that point in it was just like wow but it, they are the extension yeah. of who jesus is and right. or i should say should be mm -hmm. the extension um, because not every situation right. is that way. Yeah. Um, but we are thankful that the pastors of this house are the extension right. um, of who Jesus is. Right. And that's a good, that's a good point because church hurt and church abuse is very real. Not everyone has the experience of that. Right. But the way he said it also made me think of how much Jesus would uh, peer into that position. Come like on. because he is the shepherd, right. you know, the great shepherd and he's, uh, so much of the uh, how he's reflected in scripture is in that sure. role, like the the bishop, the bishop, the shepherd of our souls. Yeah. So, like, it would make sense for him to have like a personal stake in right. that in that role, and it being like not only is that, but whoever is looking over his people is important. Cool. And so, to have shepherds of this house. And it's not to elevate a man or elevate two people or elevate, right. you know, but it's to acknowledge that they reflect the heart of Jesus Come very on. well. Yeah. That's so good. So worthy of a good pastor's appreciation <laughs> service. Come on. Uh, so the theme scripture, um, our theme was kingdom connection. The theme scripture that Dr. Ross um, came from was Amos chapter three, In verse three. It says, do two walk together unless they agree to do so. Well, just like how you were talking about the sheep, uh, when Dr. Ross was speaking, he said the best compliment that he's ever received was that he was a shepherd that still smelled like sheep. Right. And understanding the relationship between being a pastor, but also knowing that you're still a regular sheep hmm. just in this in this service of being a shepherd and understanding that there is this this connection this correlation to to the body that you are just a regular person right and that you've been given the responsibility to to hurt right people but understanding that you're you at one point were one yourself and you still are right and that i think that 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 gets lost mm -hmm. so much with pastors these days is they're put up in this in this higher position yeah, when they are only called into service 
the 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 sheep to serve is to be uh, to be that just that connection point yeah. for the people that's good and i i see it all right that's a good <laughs> the way you said it was really good it's i think there's such a like a, a tension and a dichotomy because there is that like uh not wanting the pastor to replace who god is like, right the pastor is uh like facilitating and helping and leading and right. guiding people in a, in a direction and then uh so that like you said where people we tend to put them on a pedestal not understanding like that they're they are being shepherded still as well well come on that's but good also also given the responsibility to shepherd <laughs> so it's like the um they're not god right they're not supposed to replace god but they we have been placed you know wherever whatever local body you know you've been called to if you're watching this and you're not uh, you don't attend South Tacoma, but you have a local church. Like that body uh, is where, like the people within that house are who the shepherd, you know, is assigned to. And so, just that 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 tension of it. Well, and a crazy part I didn't know, but when he said that, he was talking about uh, burdens mm -hmm. and carrying mm -hmm. and bearing burdens and how the name Amos means burden bear mm. and he stopped his message in the midst and thanked them for carrying the burden for the community of mm. Tacoma mm. and just how he also brought it back to the people and saying that we all have a burden to bear Come on. and something that is put in us purpose wise yeah. to be carried for for what we're meant to do mm -hmm. going forward and it it brought such an understanding that that we all are called to something it's yeah. just where we are in our purpose and where we are with that burden that that god has is is something that we all need to understand and that's good and it ties into what um from last sunday's message when pastor's talking about visions for life but right. that burden is part of Come like on. a direction like yeah. if you're if it's uh if you have a burden for something that kind of lets you know where either god has placed a heart in you for right or you know where your prayer should go where the care should go ten tending to you know which makes us all shepherds in a way of what we've been called to <laughs> of what we've been purposed to Come so on. just as pastor george and angel reed have been called to sh shepherd and tend to this body of believers here uh it's also what we've uh the burden that we've been given allows us to shepherd you know whether that looks like in our our homes or you know our uh, our own communities Come or on. at work you know it's to tend to the place that god has given us right mm -hmm. that's really good come on okay so another another aspect of what dr ross said was that we have to go where it's dark that's where the light mm. is needed <laughs> yeah. he was saying that you know, light doesn't need more light. You know, you don't need, you don't need right. more light. Light yeah. is light. You know it's light because dark, it was dark. <laughs> and then there's light <laughs> that comes into it. So, uh, and I think that's where, like, the misconception of church can can happen because uh, people think that church is what God provided and salvation right. equals church or salvation equals coming to church and checking the box of church but that's good church is meant to just be like the huddle or like the you know the gathering right. place the growth place and we're supposed to go out from here and so i think people um and understandably so if there's a misconception then you devalue church you know right. you can look at church as like it's not doing anything for me mm -hmm. when it's supposed to be a place of preparation for what happens outside well i mean just just like he he shared about he joined a club where <laughs> very few are saved right. and you know the things that are considered worldly that are are done they do like like the drinking and the smoking and mm -hmm. and then telling dirty dirty stories right. it's it's he it was great that he understood that you got to get dirty sometimes because to shine the light in darkness where 
where the light is needed. Right. You've got to be able to put yourself out there. And church is that hub to be strengthened, to be able to mm-hmm. go and be that that light. Right. Um, more light, you can't distinguish what is what. Come on, um, right. But in when you're when you're a light in darkness, it right. it sticks out. Very um, evident. Yeah. Come on. So I just <laughs> it's just <laughs> crazy how he he made that 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 dis- distinction because we need as a church we need to get back to being that light Come and on. going out and Come and, on. and mingling with darkness so right. so we can shed light right. and bring them into um to the house of God right. so they can be set free. Come on. Um so they can receive the healing that they need. Yeah, come on. Oh. That's so good. And I love this part cuz he was talking about and we keep referencing Amos because that's where the, our theme scripture for this um for our past appreciation service came from. And the verse was uh, Amos 3:3 3, 3, and it says do two walk together unless they agree to do so. The King James version is where you know we might be more familiar with it but it says how can two walk together unless they agree or unless they be in agreement and you know how you were saying that amos was a shepherd and uh, you know his name meant burden bearer that one of the examples that dr ross pulled out from his life was that the first place we learn to serve is in the house of god come on gave a story uh about um brenda ross and how she um grew up in uh it wasn't that she grew up in church, but she gave her life to Christ and she started serving right away. And right. some of the ways that she learned the Bible stories was because she was asked to teach them, you know, <laughs> and it was in the house of God. It was in the practice of serving that she learned, you know, and so it was like taking that example of um, we can often look at, especially when our work weeks are longer than, you know, how many times we're in church. Right. Uh, our work we can be prioritized or that organization can be prioritized when like God's kingdom or the kingdom of God is uh, like a, a an organization, like a structure like that requires strategy, requires service, like the same uh, what people might disconnect in their work week from right. like uh, from God or the house of God, like not understanding that it applies like what you would see and understand out there would apply to God's house. So learning the principles of service here in the, or in the house of God is just as effect, just as relevant to building and expanding the kingdom Come on. as it is if you apply those principles to your job or to your work week, you know? Right. And I, th- I think that that's such a big thing because he, I never looked at the, this perspective, but shepherds from and he said from a sociological um standpoint Mm -hmm. they were low on a totem pole you know they they and then he stopped and was like well if there's anybody that collects trash um and as we appreciate come on but it's understanding that it's looked at now better Mm -hmm. in a better light being a shepherd but it it, it never it didn't mean that you had status mm. and it was a way of serving but it was you were on the bottom you were you were trash right. and and a lot of cases and so I think understanding that service sometimes starts with being low low yeah. and it's just by simply doing what you're asked to do or just doing what and then and then you you continue to rise through mm more responsibility to what God and it it's understanding that it's not complicated Mm -hmm. it's just it's just giving of who you are and being able to give be willing to give an aspect of who you are uh, in service to the body of Christ that's good that's good uh so another Another thing that Dr. Ross said was that the presence of God and that baptism of the Holy Spirit is for the purpose of sharing the gospel. And I think that goes back to what you're saying about church not being, uh, or it's just like a gathering place, just a place where, you know, we, we get refueled, we get, uh, sharpened, 
but it's for going out and it's like a lot of times you know the presence of god like you know there's no place we'd rather be you know? Come on. just want to be in his presence be good uh right. you know to stay there but his presence is not just for us like every time we're with him Come on. we get we get lit up on the inside like, right like set ablaze you yeah. know set on fire yeah and it's hard when you're trying to keep fire to yourself like that's what jeremiah said it's like fire shut up in my bones Come on. probably because he just got out of worship you know <laughs> <laughs> right he had the word you know on right. the inside of him but it's like that um it was so much of the message was like when we look at connection it's not just for ourselves it's like now that i know what i have or now that i'm becoming acquainted with what i have like how do i give this away what 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 is it going to take for me to lay this at the feet of someone else and that's where the service comes in right it's the efforts that we make to give it away like to give our um what we've received in god come on away that's so good yeah that's really good <laughs> no, one more. okay last one last one wait do you have one that you want to no. Emphasize. No, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So the last one then that we'll do is from First Peter five eight. Uh, he talked about uh, how, um, like the one of the questions that was listed in Amos three was about a lion. Does a lion roar if he doesn't have prey or if he hasn't caught the prey? Yeah, that was He's, really good. Yeah. No, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, he doesn't roar because if he roared, he would give his position away. <laughs> And, and it made sense. But um, Chelsea, two weeks ago, had um, given the message about fear go. Mm-hmm. And the only reason that the enemy would roar, because that doesn't make sense. If you don't have it, you're giving your position away. Why roar? Right. And it was for the element of fear. Like for uh-huh. the element of, if I can frighten you and destabilize you and right. move you out of position, then then he catches but it's in the right. roar. But like Dr. Ross said, he's toothless. Yes. You know? <laughs> he can't. And it's it's in the fear, what we do to navigate the fear that right. moves us out of position. So he goes along with that. Like the devil works fear in our lives so that he can catch us. But we're not oh, ignorant. That's so his, good. You know, well, and it, it, it just reveals the power, the true power he really has. Mm-hmm. He has that. Yeah, come on. And, and a lot of times we give that power to him Mm -hmm. because of our fear because of because his roar means nothing but if it gets enough of it Mm -hmm. to create us to be uh unstable and and things and so then that's when he's got us it was such a that was such a great point um yes is that fear it's one of the elements that keeps us from service keeps us uh, from laying our laying our lives down uh, the way that um, is required of us that being a kingdom person requires right. of us so it was just a good message and again I mean we're going to say this every time but go back and listen to it even if you were here in the service um, you know Come it's on. on the app and we'll we'll link it uh, in this video as well but listen to the message and let it serve as a reminder like something right. to stir you up when you're um, eating it. Cause it wasn't, I, I think that's the part, like there was such honor and appreciation right. for like our pastors in it. Yeah. And also a charge to us as well as to not let, uh, not let who we are as believers be Come on. Uh, kind of uh, muddied by who we think, who we think we're supposed to be or what we think church or right. believers should look like. Like there's a mandate of going outward uh that's uh that's on our lives that's supposed to be and so yes church is important you're never going to hear us say that church is not important it is (laughs) it is important and also what you do outside of church is important because there are more lives on the outside of here there always will be more lives on the outside of church than can ever fit in one building so you know we're our um vision is for us to develop equip and send out believers and that's that's all churches develop equip and send and when you're here come you'll get lit up because the presence of god you know and not only with the presence of god but with with one another with other believers and you know it's important and so you won't hear us diminish church at all we just i it's important for us to reposition 
what church looks like in our lives and make it so that church, what happens on Sunday, what happens on Wednesday is always a stepping stool for what happens uh, in the days that follow. So we're always going to tell you, like and subscribe, Come but on. also share it because at one point that Dr. Ross made was you're going to reach people that you don't even know mm-hmm. and you've never met before. And sometimes that's just through sharing yeah. this content or, you know, just sharing your light because you never, you never know who's listening. You never know who's watching. Exactly. And um, social media is this platform that we can display who we are. And sometimes all it takes is sharing this video or sharing content of who you are to reach people that you may not know you may not know very well so we encourage you to share this uh to like it to comment um because we want to hear from you so join us next time as we dissect how our faith intersects with our life see you next time